Hello Internet, welcome back to our snow shader. We have a problem. Uh, this is about as fast as we can recover. Any slower than this, or so our snow recovers over time. Uh, you can probably see that there. Over time, uh, it, it, it just grows back. The problem we're having is it has to grow back at about this space or about this speed. Otherwise, be due to just floating point errors, we actually just lose all of our resolution. Uh, so right now, it's set from this uh, constant here. So we're going to call this our recovery time. I'm going to just kind of refactor this out. And we'll put this float recovery time make this a parameter for our compute shader. So we're actually gonna pass this into our compute shader and then go to our snow physics. We have a new public float uh, recovery time, making names up as I go, but sure. Then we just need to set this here. So just so it keeps up to date, uh, you probably don't want this in your in your production stuff. Uh, but since we're just kind of playing with this in the editor, I'm going to put this in the update. So we're going to have a calculation engine dot uh, set float. And we're going to have a recovery time equal to our recovery time. And so this recovery time, the first one, the string has to match what's in our compute shader right here. We're going to need a semicolon or that's really not going to work. And then we have this. So now everything is good. We should be able to actually sync that value across. So just to make sure everything is still working, I'm going to stop this and actually just make sure it's still going. And then what, what I want to do is actually adjust the encoding for our project. Uh, so right now we have two render textures that I create and we kind of flip between those in a sort of a double buffered fashion. And that's what's actually used to draw the actual displacement. The problem is we're using a, uh, ARGB32 format. And so what that does is it splits a 32 bit int into eight, uh, eight bits each and assigns those to each color channel. So your red channel only has eight bits, uh, your green channel only has eight bits, and so forth. The problem with that is that's not enough. <laughs> so what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually be expanding that so we get just more resolution in that, in that texture. And so Unity actually gives us a way to do that. Once we get this sorted and actually get everything working, we should just be able to switch the format for that and it should all work. So everything is working. Uh, it's not recovering, but that's because this is going to be set to, uh, where the snow simulation, there it is, uh, 0 0.1. There we go. And now everything recovers over time. But if I set this to say, uh, 0 0.01, nothing happens. It's, so it should be a tenth of the speed, but it's just none of the speed. So we need to make that actually work. So since this isn't working, uh, 0 0.01 wasn't working, I'm going to set it to that. And if we see that having an effect, we'll uh, know we at least made a difference. Uh, so this should, if I uh, understand what I'm doing, I, I've never actually played with these texture modes before. So we're, we're going to see what happens, but I think all I need to do is set the format. So if I do this format is equal to a render texture format, and I think we're going to use depth. Uh, there's a number of things here. The two that I would be interested in are going to be our float and depth. Uh, so depth is going to be pretty much the same thing. I believe it changes based on platform, unlike the uh, our float, which is just going to be a 32 bit float with only the red channel. So that, that just means every single pixel is just one pixel or one color, but you get 32 bits uh, to kind of define that. So you get a lot of resolution. You can store a lot of information in that. So theoretically by doing this, we've set the format for those to be uh, a depth. So they should have far more resolution. I believe Unity handles the translation back into those formats. So we don't need to actually worry too much about them. So. Well, uh, that worked well, didn't it? Okay, we have no output whatsoever. So that's cool, that didn't work at all. Let's try our float. 
Uh, so there's there's a whole bunch of these. You can go and I'll post a link to uh, where all of these are defined on Unity's documentation. If you just look at this class, here are all of them. Uh, so we get like RG int and all of these things. Uh, so yeah, you can play with those, figure out which one fits best. Uh, since depth it didn't work, we're gonna try R float. I think this so this should save everything in the red channel, and since we're using the red channel. I think it should make sense, but I don't see any changes. Actually, hold on, that's a lie. So this is gonna be hard to see. So I'm actually going to, uh, how can we do this? Let's disable these two spheres. So they aren't doing anything anymore, and I'm just gonna leave this for just a little bit. We should see it recover slowly over time. Pretty sure that's moving, but again, the point was to go slow, so it's kind of hard to tell. Um, but I think that, I think we are actually seeing a change. Uh, this in the top left up here does look dimmer. Yeah, okay, so it is, it is recovering. You, you can tell that has definitely gotten slimmer so by using our float uh, texture format instead of just the the standard uh, argb32 we're actually able to store the the information we need so that the snow actually recovers far more slowly and we should be able to go slower than what i did this uh, this would take 100 seconds uh, to fully recover from completely depressed so if it's at zero uh, and completely trampled down it's going to take uh, we have a float of this, so 0.01. .01. It's going to take uh, effectively one divided by that seconds, which just turns out to be 100 in this case, but it does work. So now we actually can go uh, and have longer recovery times for this stuff so that your, your snow actually recovers slower instead of like blizzard conditions where it's just immediately back to the way it was. This way it can go a lot more slowly and kind of fit the, the gameplay. You could probably do a lot more with this if you really wanted to. You could even have like a splat map uh, that kind of affected. So this area would recover faster than this other area. Maybe part of it is covered by like a cliff or something. So there's no less snow falling there. You could actually simulate all of that just with the splat map and just modifying this recovery time. But all of that's possible now. So. I'll leave this here. I just wanted to do something really quick to kind of get that working because it seemed like a good solution. Uh, and then we'll, we'll move on to doing other stuff with this in the next video. So that's it for this video. Until next time, see you internet.